No more added uh, stimulus from you today. Uh, are things brightening up in the economy, would you say? Well, things are improving a bit compared to our view in July, but when it comes to doing more or doing less, basically we have decided to expand our balance sheet substantially earlier, so there was no, there was no need to add to those various programs this time because basically we have, we have said that we're comfortable with the expansion going on all the way until, let's say, roughly the summer 2021. Mm. And given that COVID is resurfacing in many parts of the world, do you see risk for new setbacks and how would that affect your policy going forward? Well, that's, of course, one of the issues that everybody is, is sort of wondering about what's, uh, what's next. And it's a relevant issue for us because, I mean, in our case, imports, exports are roughly 50 percent of GDP. And that means that whatever happens in the rest of the world, it will hit us in one, uh, one way or the other. And in a bad scenario, what that implies is that then that would probably force us to do more. Mm. And you still say that you're open to uh, using negative rates uh, as a tool again? Yeah, well, technically speaking, we've done a lot. We've, we've practiced for many years, so we certainly know how to do it. But then that needs to be a, a meaningful measure. It's hard for me to imagine, though, that, that, that things would sort of hinge on negative rates only. I mean, we're going to be stuck with this kind of package that we have put in place probably for quite, uh, quite a while, which is very, very similar to what many other central banks have done. And you're also making a historic move into the corporate bond market. Can you give any details around these purchases and on, how, on whether you're planning on expanding them? Well, I mean, if you look at uh, what we have said that we're ready to buy, it's $10 billion, and that's a small amount compared to this, the entire size of the market. But at the same time, we are quite comfortable with that measure because it's, uh, it increases uh, the stability in the, in, in the market and we are ready to be there actually for quite, uh, quite, quite, some, uh, quite some time. And so far, it's taken a while to deal with all, all sorts of practical aspects of how you actually do this. We're up and running and we started buying last week and now, now we know, know how to do it. And what is important here in the long run is that it, it means that that uh, we know how to do this and that means that if there is a need we can substantially uh, expand those pur purchases if need be. Mm. And the corporate bond QE has been subject to a lot of controversy given the risk of distortions and as the market has already recovered from the panic situation in, we saw in March, what do you have to say to your critics? Well, when it comes to expanding our balance sheet, uh, we have a choice here between, between stopping too early or sometime later. And it's very dangerous, actually, to, to withdraw these programs too early because then you might have to step back in, and that would not be a good and pleasant uh, scenario. So it's much, much better, actually, to try to do these things in such a way that when eventually things normalize, stopping buying, let's say, corporate bonds or government debt or whatever it is that we, we do, ideally it should be considered to be a non-event because it's obvious that uh, things have improved and it's time to move on. Uh, but uh, we are by far not in that state of the world as of yet. Given the controversy, though, why haven't you pu made public the BlackRock consultancy report on corporate bond QE? Uh, because that report is actually providing us with their thoughts, views, reflections on, on the corporate bond market, and that's for internal, uh, internal consumption. Uh, but it's, uh, it's up to us to uh, decide what to do and what not to do, and that we have, that we have done. And now when we have started our program, we have also clearly stated how we gradually will move and how we will change over time and also actually over time increase uh, transparency. But why not keep it as transparent as poss possible? Uh, the Swedish FSA has asked for more transparency. Not no, we're absolutely, we're absolutely in favor of that. But this is a market which is quite different from, let's say, the government debt market. And that means that it takes a while to gradually increase transparency. But there is nothing, there's absolutely not, we are absolutely not against transparency. It's just that it will take a while to gradually increase transparency. And it also has something to do with the maturity of this market. And this market is less mature uh, than, let's say, uh, the, the market for mortgage-backed securities or government debt. But given the strong reactions uh, on your secrecy, could that make you reconsider? Uh, not, not, not presently, because we have clearly stated how we're going to do this step by uh, step by step, and we provide we will provide market participants with a little bit more information than what we have done so far when it comes to uh, buying uh, short-term uh, corporate uh, corporate debt, uh, their certificates of, of, of deposits, and that uh, 
that process is, in, 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 is set in motion and will take it step by step. But in a worst case scenario, the feeling the market is uh, left with is that the truth is too awful to, to reveal, which might lead investors to shun Swedish corporate bonds. How will you avoid that outcome? Well, we'll do this. We will do this gradually. And keep in mind that 10 billion, that's a small amount of money. It's a lot of money, but it still is a small am amount of money given the size of the, the, size of the market. And, and we are absolutely in tune, so to speak, with the, with the supervisors when it comes to this, is that ideally over time, we would like to contribute to develop this market into something more transparent and better functioning uh, than what we have today. Uh, but that won't happen over, uh, overnight, but we certainly are willing uh, and will push in that, in that direction. I mean, as far as I can remember, the first conversations about corporate, the corporate debt market in this country started in the mid 80s. So it has taken us a long, long time to get to where we are today. And still this market for corporate debt is not as mature as some other markets that we have. And it's never a bad thing in a country to have many markets compared to having fewer markets. And we are ready to push in that direction.